fun. Like you should. I mean, that's what it's fun. about. Like you can't, you can't spend your. And by the way, I asked you something about that. You said you overthinking and analyzing these things. Is that maybe what? Because you've been really open about anxiety, mental yeah. health, right? Mm-hmm. And you even have on your Everybody album from 2017. You have the song called Anxiety featuring mm-hmm. Lucy Rose. Shout out to her. Shout out to Lucy. Shout out to Lucy. She's very talented. And I want to ask you, like, that's a very common theme all over when i think about when i think about logic i think about all the good things in the world right but also think about mental health Mm. depression all these dark things all those things that i've been struggling with my entire life bro for sure and you've been like an outlet for me to kind of relieve that pressure right but i want to ask you like that over that that overthinking thing like is that what contributed to your anxiety or is it something else because you I, i do also remember that you did have a moment where this is like one of the i felt like this is one of the craziest craziest moments of your career when you you had just sold out. I believe it was may, maybe the Madison Square, Madison Garden. Square Garden, yeah. and then all these thousands of people sold out, sold out, and you you broke down on stage, and I saw that that shit broke my heart because I was like, damn. Oh no, that was actually a festival I was headlining in Philadelphia. Was that okay? Okay, so real super duper quick. The okay. Madison Square Garden thing was the fact that I had sold out the garden, and in real life I was like, oh my god, and they're chanting my name and okay, they're singing okay. every lyric. And then I go off stage, but I look at my phone, and the internet was like clowning. Oh, me. talk about that then. Like, is that what contributes to? Your, like, is that part of it? Oh like, yeah, I mean, of course, bro. First of all, we're not supposed to be exposed to as much shit as we're exposed to. Like, just all the things that we see daily, it's insane. Let alone one person in the one percent of the world that is so famous that just millions of people are are talking about them every day yeah and with that you see the positive and the negative you know so that's why i just stepped away from it because yeah it it did affect me and it affected me you know i'd I'd have people be like well you gotta have tough skin and you gotta and it's just like nah that's not true i used to be so angry at myself Mm -hmm. at the fact that it hurt when somebody said something hurtful i used to be mad at myself where the anger come from because because I think that also came from the world being like, you're a man. You're not supposed to feel this way. I know, for real. But mm-hmm. honestly, every time you go on line, and this is years ago. I'm in a much different space. I know yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. Just, of course. Yeah, yeah. You don't give a fuck about that now. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, But the thing that I learned you know, over these last few years is that like it's okay that it hurts. I'm a human being. I'm sensitive. I'm emotional. I'm a man. That's who I am. I'm not trying to deny any of these natural feelings and emotions that I have. And once I did that and I and I stopped being mad at myself at the fact it hurt and I allowed myself to go, it's okay, it hurts, you're human, I then realized that I'm in control of two things, how much it hurts and how long I allow it to hurt me. And all those feelings that I felt before my son were was born just completely diminished because I realized like none of that shit matters Let's, so yeah. and now i don't focus so i don't go on the internet mm-hmm. like i don't sometimes I'll, I'll poke in a little bit to connect with fans mm-hmm. and then even then i'll see some you know some some really gnarly shit that somebody's saying about my baby yeah. or my family yeah. or whatever and and then i see it and i just i used to like it would fuck me up mm-hmm. and i would like click it and i would try to learn about this person like why don't you like me like i really tried to understand like bro you got a cowboy bebop avatar i like bebop you listen to doom i like doom you like supreme i like supreme mm. you 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 came from nothing you i see you got a nice little job i can well, like ah and then i just stopped one day and was like bro this <laughs> shit doesn't matter like there is nothing that i could ever do in a million years to make someone or people at the cool kids table or whatever like me that don't like me and then also if those people that i want to like me are saying hurtful, mean, negative, terrible, unthinkable, speakable shit about me and others, I don't want you to like me. You're a piece yeah. of shit. Mm-hmm. And when I realized that, I was really set free. One thing I like, I always say this, tell myself that when I'm worrying too much about what's going on in the outside, what people say about me is a lot of people, they make up their mind about you before they even speak to you. So why would you try to convince someone who you already know doesn't fuck with you? So And like, they're not even going to give you the time to convince them because they just made their mind up. exactly and they don't really they don't really it's not personal because they don't know you personally yeah so exactly. yeah i know but it's hard when you're someone like me who is so of personable course. of course and puts that in his music of course and whatever and then people are just like but i think lame. i think you're gonna make the like right now you know maybe let's talk talk a little bit about college park because this is fresh this is where your mind is at yeah you got a tour coming well not really what's funny is college park is like so surreal.